say, God has rescued you. God has rescued you. Look at that label. Over whatever the enemy said he has bound you in. I say, God has rescued you. Over the situations of life that you think you cannot come out of. I say, God has rescued you. Ay, 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 ay. I feel very strong that at the end of this year, we are going to see God coming as Olu Beja. I feel like the thought of the enemy has started to run over. So God is coming in might and power to put a public show of the enemy. Triumphant. I say God has delivered. I say you have escaped. Ah! Somebody shout, I have escaped. That's it. Hallelujah. Join your hands together for Jesus. You may please have your seats. Glory to God. So we are going to be talking about the Passover and we are going to be looking at the importance of the blood in this Passover month. You know, I shared it, I think, last week. And I said that two weeks ago. I said that we are in a 40-day journey. And we need to be armed for that 40-day journey. Or else it may turn to what? 40 years. And God forbid, say to, say to your neighbor, God forbid, my 40-day journey will not become 40 years. You know, when I started to read that scripture, I got frightened even more. Because they were not just even living for 40 years. They were wandering. I will not wander. In the name of Jesus. I said, 2023, I'm going with precision. If you're not getting me. You see, by the time God is still with us in December, by 31st of December, you are already seeing what is happening in 20, 2023. You know what I'm saying? This guesswork of show my Jesu, show my Jesu. Should I travel? Should I not travel? Should I stay? Should I not stay? Should I go? No, you have understanding of what is happening in 2023. Then you can now start to decree because He has shown you. Then you now start to speak. Hallelujah. So. December is coming and I was asking God, God, this seems like an Easter message. And he said, no, my children do not know the reason why I'm born. So they cannot uh, understand why I died. Wow. My children have stopped understanding the real reason why I was born. December now is time for some people to just switch off. It's, it's seeming not to have importance anymore. Hey. That there is a reason why we celebrate the, the something. If it's about clocking the new year, there is new year holiday for that. So December 25th has more importance than you taking break from work. You need to understand it. Then you can understand Easter. Is somebody with me? So we are going to be giving you understanding of these things. So that we can apply our hearts to wisdom. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it took me through Exodus 12. And I started to understand what God was saying. When he told me that, Olumde, Egypt is not just a place. Egypt is not just a location. And I started to write. Before we go to Exodus 12, look at Exodus 13, verse 3. See what God sees when he sees Egypt. Exodus 13, verse 3. And that was good. Oh, yeah. He says, So Moses said to the people, This is a day to remember forever. Amen. The day you left Egypt, oh, the place of your slavery. And the Lord started to breathe upon that phrase, the place of your slavery. And I'm here to speak to some people that it seems like as if your life is in a loop. It seems like as if you are going round in circles. It just seems like as if it's this one addiction or this one issue. Or the fact that you just don't get the good jobs. And the Lord started to give me categories of people that are in this place. So if I start to mention you don't feel ashamed, liberation has come. And that's why I said that you have been rescued. You have, been ex you have escaped. Because by reason of today's sermon, you would understand that the devil has no right to tamper with your destiny anymore. And now you'll be armed with the tools that can make you speak back to him and gain the understanding or the, 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 the authority that God has given you. So I started to write. He said, Egypt is that familiar land of pain. And I said, no, Lord, why did you just say pain? He said, no, it's familiar. Do you know how long the Israelites were in Egypt for? 430 years. 
It sounded like that thing that they told you about your great grandmother that happened to your grandmother that happened to your mother and it seemed to happen to you. It sounds like that thing that they said concerning your lineage about how those people never get married at, until they are 40. It sounds like that thing that happens to the men in your family that does not make them have sense and they focus right. It's that thing that is pain but is familiar. And you have learned to cope with it. It seems as if every generation have only taught you how to cope. Nobody taught you how to get free. Hallelujah. It's that attitude that keeps thinking and you keep talking about it and you think that you're out but it shows up in February then it escapes you in March then it shows up in April then you have June, July, August then all of a sudden when somebody did something the thing came off five times stronger. We are talking about your Egypt. place of slavery that gives you room for swag. You are suffering but you are smiling. You are not an owner of the soil but you say if you are familiar that we say with the ball. You have mastered the art of living from paycheck to paycheck. That's an Egypt. You have turned everything you do hustle and so you hustle. That's an Egypt. Egypt is that that economic system that has told you that you cannot advance beyond a certain position is a system and I'm praying for those that will relocate I'm praying please be sent because if you are not sent you are going to a system that has conditioned men to believe that they cannot rise above it I know what I'm talking about so only those that are sent can flourish if you join the bandwagon, you may not be able to come out. But I pray that for those that may have gone, redemption will hit them. Yeah. But you cannot make these things just by the feeling of where everybody is going. Last two weeks or last week, I taught you guys, 10 might be saying the wrong thing. And it's louder. Wow. So Egypt is that preferable land that everybody has said, we'll go there and cope. Oh, that, all men are the same. Just marry one and go. That's an Egypt. Oh, you see, the thing about sickness is we just have to live through it. No, that's an Egypt. Uh, but it has happened so long that I cannot even count now. Now I just, I just, I just even thank God. Yes, thanking God is good, but there is a liberation that can happen. Anything that robs you from seeing victory is an Egypt. And you would understand what I'm saying because the Bible said when a word came from God to Moses that tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Egypt is that institution that when they see that you're about to break free, they add more to your punishment. Egypt is that system that the moment you start reading the Bible, that is when all of a sudden something starts to steal your time and you can't read it anymore. You need to understand these things so that you don't make levity the things that are stealing life from you. Egypt are so prevalent but we have named it different things and we are becoming cool with it. about Egypt is it seems to offer security to slaves you see I've been doing a study on Babylon and God was telling me about the kingdom of Babylon you see the kingdom of Babylon is a kingdom that they know that you carry something so they will put you they will feed you their food but only the wise ones know that I can't eat the food like Daniel they will entice you with all the good things of their land they will tell you, don't worry, it's fine. Just, 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 just manage. Don't worry, everybody's doing it. What's, what's, what's there? You know, just, 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 don't, don't be extra. And they water down your spirituality. Babylon is that system that makes you start to second guess the very instructions that God told you. I'm not just talking about the Bible, the, the, the instructions you read. You know, there are certain things that you don't read. And it is in the place of revelation that God tells you that, Auntie, no, for you, you cannot wear this type of dress. It's not in the Bible, but God told you. It is Babylon and Egypt that might start to make you tell that you are extra. Everybody is doing it. But you now start to negate the instructions God has given you. That's all I look at you. An example of someone that failed an exam. But God used a failing exam to now make you someone that will be a prayer mantle for another person. You thought that your failing 
was a result of your unpreparedness. God saw beyond your unpreparedness and said, I need to save a generation. You see, it is Egypt that makes you say, I beg, even my, and she said it, even my own have not solved. It is Egypt that gets you conceited that you cannot open your eyes to see the need of the Father. And I bless the name of the Lord that you caught the assignment. And look at us today. We are not only celebrating your victory, we are celebrating the victory of another person. And through you, somebody was blessed. What a joy in heaven. Do you think at the end of the day, it is GST 101 that improves God? Or the fact that a life now knows that beyond reading, there is power in prayers. It is Egypt that robs you of that type of revelation. It's Egypt that makes you eat stingy alone and you think that you are fat and you are enjoying life alone. When you can bless the world. Egypt keeps you in a perpetual state of never giving but always asking. So they seem to offer you some level of security. Oh yes, 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 yes. There is a swag when it comes to if, if, if you if you if you partner with the devil, the devil also has fringe benefits. Yes. It's not that whatever he's giving you can never be compared to whatever, what, what, what it is that you already had. Hi. Not what God will give you, no, what you already had. Oh, 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 oh. And he went to man and says, if you eat of this fruit, you will be like God. Hello. Hello. For you are created in the image and the likeness. Ah. Please, I beg of you, be students of the world so that the devil does not introduce you to you and you don't even know you. Because I feel like at that point, when the devil said that you will be like God, something was checked in the eyes of the woman. She said, hello, sir. Show me, meet on. Have you seen me finish and you didn't see God? I mean, what do you think is missing that I've not seen in God? But you see, if you don't know the scriptures, every bus stop will look attractive. Even the one that is one chance. So you must be very careful with Egypt. And I feel like we're in a generation that we have stopped reading the world. We have only started following the people. Please be careful. Especially when you go to, and you frolic around people that the only way they preach is only through prophecy. Prophecy balances the word. The word balances prophecy. If you cannot find those two exchanges, be careful. Because the moment they start to say things out of the scripture, you will not know. Please be Berean Christians. Be able to read what they said and go back and say, sir, eh, so that, that thing that you said that now we can see it indefinitely because grace is for everybody. Where, where, where is this in the Bible again, sir? Is, is this the context? Egypt tells you that you are suffering, but it's okay. Just manage it. Did you notice that the people of Israel, <laughs> Joseph, that introduced the concept of Egypt, told them when he was dying that take my body away. Joseph, yes. when all things were good and good and yeah. gold, he knew oh, that God. Egypt would at best be a temporary place. There is a land flowing with milk and honey. If my living body cannot take, take yeah. my dead body. He knew. Then some people, just because they give you two loaves and five fishes, will now settle there. When there is a land flowing. They did not say they come with seasonal supply. They said that place is flowing. Yeah. Meaning that when you drink half a gallon today, tomorrow is full again. It's flowing. Yeah. With milk and honey. But Egypt mindset will keep you forever fixated on the tiny you see. And it will never allow you to plunge in with faith for what God is saying. It says, the land kills every form of creativity. And that's how they are able to put you in perpetual slavery. Ooh. I can imagine free bonds like the Israelites. They now became ones that were gathering straws to build houses for Egyptians. And somebody even decided to say, you know what? God is going to deliver you. And the enemy puts more pressure. And they carved the game. And they said, let's just be doing it. Let's not offend them. Ah, the devil is going to be offended in this December. Ooh. Ah, 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 oh my God, ah, this revelation, the devil is going to be mad, that I caught it, ah, it turn, and that's what somebody is going to be saying, yes. that you will catch it, and you'll be like, please, Esa, devil, 
when you are walking past Yaba, come to my street. We need to talk. Because I just want to show you that I have power now. Yes. Ah, hello, hello. Yes. You have buffeted me for too long. It's not bad for me to give you a little one or two. Ah. Now, that is the structure of Egypt. So, now you can understand that we are moving past talking about Egypt as a geographical location. Yes, sir. So, so, for some of you that are saying, oh, I will never do tourism in Egypt. That's what we are talking about. We are talking about things that are more than that. We are talking about spiritual systems. We are talking about principalities. We are talking about things that have exalted themselves above the knowledge of God. Now, we are bringing them down. Ah, uh ah. -uh. It's Egypt that tells you that you are not fine enough and you need to appease to a man with other bodily benefits. It's Egypt. It's Egypt. It's Egypt that tells you that eh, maybe marriage is not, maybe all, all of them are just lying. They will not tell you. You don't know what they're cuckoo facing underneath. Mm. My own, this is my own. Like, no, 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 no. There's something called heaven on it. I know it because I'm in it. Uh, mm, mm, don't be angry. If you're angry, so I can't, I can't help you. But don't settle. Don't settle. Don't live in Egypt when there's Canaan. So God comes with a stronger promise. That guys, this land that you think is great, is not as great as where I want to take you to. There is still a place called Canaan. That place has health benefits like you can ever think of. That place has benefits that you can ever dream about. In fact, the Bible says exceedingly abundantly above your what you can ever think or imagine is there. But I just need one thing. Faith. You know, I told you, one of the things that Egypt robs you off is the ability to put your faith on the line. So God, in his omnipotence and his all-powerfulness, has been speaking to Egypt and in person of Pharaoh, that let my people go. And Pharaoh has been doing back and forth, like I told you. Those scenarios seem like as if today you gave testimony about it two months, you're not like, ah, God, but the things still showed up. What was happening? Ah, ah, ah. God is saying to something, let my people go. But you see, I read a place in the scripture. God said that I don't want to, I don't want to deal with them yet. I want their cup to be full. <laughs> How merciful is our God that is even giving sinners last chance? He's giving issues that you know what? You you watote and I will come and finish you. So some of you, you are in that place, but you are saying it as, as if God is not working. Calm down. You are looking at it as God has abandoned me because what I gave a testimony for has resurfaced two months after. No, man. You see, there is a level God is building these things where he is annihilating them perpetually. So God started to talk to Moses. And we all remember the 12 plagues, right? But I'm going to only focus on the last one. Because I feel like at the last point, God was like, you know what? I'm going to really, really show this guy. And the Bible said, Moses went to him and said, Thus says the Lord, sir. Because you have not refused to let the people go. You are, the Lord is going to kill all your firstborns, including the animals. And I would have thought that someone that has seen water turn to blood, frogs come from nowhere, missiles attack people, or whatever the thing that affected their skin. He has seen all that one, and the guy said it, and it happened. He now said that your first child will die and you did not feel like you should beg him. You see, that is how arrogant some of these problems are. And God is about to shame them. Because you stepped into this church and you started to believe the word and the devil did not take a cue that, ah, this girl has moved to a place of power. This girl now has understanding. This boy now has understanding. The devil still wants to come and show you in 2022. I say you are the one that will show the devil in 2022. And that was what happened. So let's look at Exodus 12. Verse 28. It says, So the people of Israel did just as the Lord had commanded through Moses and Aaron. And that night, at midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborns in the land of Egypt. For the firstborns of Pharaoh 
who sat uh, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the prisoners in the dungeon, even to the firstborns of the living stock were all killed. Pharaoh and all the officers and all the people of Egypt woke up during the night and loud wailings were heard throughout the land of Egypt. There was no single house where someone had not died. I say this prophetically over you. There will be no single one here that the devil will still be able to afflict anymore. Yeah. The Bible said every single Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Egyptian house recorded a loss. I say over everything that has buffeted you, the devil will record loss. Yeah. You don't get, for some of you, the devil has had perpetual card of scores. I say he is going to encounter loss yeah. in the name of Jesus. But you see, the way God had to walk about that miracle was by the blood. And I'm going to show you something. The Bible said that for this to happen for Pharaoh and the entire Egyptian family, I need the Israelites to obey an instruction. And that is why I'm telling somebody here Aside from the hipness of whatever church you attend here or if you are visiting or wherever it is that you are coming from, never live a life of Christianity that does not have instructions laden with it. We are not just here to flex. We are here to obey. Are you listening to me? I, I will say it again. What makes us champion is our ability to obey the word of the Lord and to key in to the victory he has already won for us. Now, there was a blood that was going to do something. But the Israelite needed to kill an animal and put it on their door. God was not going to do that for them. Are you kidding me? God is not going to do that for them. He had already created the system that would kill the enemy. But he needed the children to partner. So I beg of you, after every service, after every time you read the Bible, never go without saying, God, what are you saying? What instruction are you telling me? Because that's what makes men. So look at what the Bible started to show me. It started to show me instructions that gave this Israelite victory. The first thing I'm going to share with you. Exodus 12 verse, verse 3. Announced to the whole community of Israel... That on the 10th day of this month, each family must choose. Somebody say choose. Choose. God is about to do something and God still gives them a what? Choice. Now, you will find out that this was also God talking about Jesus. There was a relationship between this and the Messiah that was about to come. And he says, choose a lamp or a goat for a sacrifice. Open your Bibles to Revelations 3, Revelations 5, 4 to 5. Revelations 5, 4 to 5. Then I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and read it. Next. But one of the 24 elders said to me, Stop weeping. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to the throne of David, has won the victory. He is worthy to open the scrolls and the seven seals. It seemed as though at that point, nobody could deliver Israel from the hands of Israel from the hand of Egypt. But God is saying to you, I know you have been weeping because you feel that that situation has no cure. Weep not. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah the hair of David's throne has won the victory. He is worthy to open it. So in that same vein, the Israelites were about to contact something that was going to win this battle for them. But they had to choose. So the question I want to ask you today, are you choosing God? Are you choosing God or are you just playing with God? Is it fun to be in church on Sunday or is your heart really here? Are you choosing God? The next thing he said, look at 12 verse 6. Back to Exodus, Exodus 12 verse 6. It says, take special care 
of this chosen animal. I know we're in an age where Christianity looks cool, but all many of us take special care. You know when I started to think, take special care, he said, oh, they change it to make this sacred. How many of you consider your Christianity sacred? How many of you understand that what you have, you cannot just toy with it anyhow? I can understand that you may be struggling with one or two things, but how many of you are making concerted efforts to ensure that you are not living the life that you came out of? He's saying take special care. You see, what died for you was not ordinary blood. If it was ordinary, maybe we would have found other people that would die, but the blood was spotless. No sin. And the last I checked, nobody was able to open that type of scroll except Jesus. So make it something that remember the sacrifice. You see, why this is important is because when the enemy starts to come, I don't want him to find something in you. You know, literally speaking, I started to think of that scripture. When God told them, he said, all the Israelites stay in your houses. For the angel of death is going to be going to the houses of the Egyptians. Can I ask what would have happened if an Israelite was in the house of the Egyptians? I said, don't go where God has not sent you. What you carry is, is treasurable. When God is saying, hey, when God is saying separate, separate, he gets why. When God is saying, this thing that you used to do, I don't desire it anymore. It's because God wants to do something and it will be against his character to kill others or to punish others that are doing that and you, you are doing it. So guys, I'm begging you. These things are very, very serious. I'm speaking to believers and that's why I'm telling you, this Christianity that you have, treat it with a little decorum. I can tell how you treat with Christianity by the things you say. Do you know? I can tell by your conversations. I can tell by the way you dress. I can tell by the things that you aim after. I can tell this thing is sacred. This animal that died is sacred. The blood of Jesus is sacred. Now the third instruction, 7B, 7A. It says, put the blood over your house. So I started to think, if it is blood, it will dry up, right? The instruction says, when the plague of death sees the blood, it shall what? So what it means is for as long as the plague of death can see the blood. But if it is physical blood, it is bound to finish. I don't know how many of you, after a while, doctors are here. Blood turns from red to black. After a while, it's just black spots. After a while, it's gone. So if God puts our entire salvation on such a temporary type of blood, don't you think we're in trouble? So God now said, you know what? I don't just want to give them a blood that can wash away. I want them to continually eat the blood. Let the blood blend with their blood. And that is how we start to talk about communion. Now the very word Passover came from that scripture. When the angel sees the blood or when the plague sees the blood, it shall pass over. So it seeks to say that if you are in a loop or you are in a cycle of difficulty or you are in a challenge, all you need to say is challenges were not made to stay. They were made to pass Oh, come on. And the only thing that can enable challenge not stay the is blood. the blood. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. So I understand that the enemy will come and try me. You are feeling like headache. And I'm like, okay. However, the Bible says, by his stripes, I am healed. So headache, pass. Oh, come on. You guys are getting me. Oh, but they said that ah, at this level, childbearing might be difficult now. Oh, are you serious? Wow. But the Bible said, many are the children of the righteous, says the Lord. He says, my, my quiver will be full with them. So, lies of the enemy, pass. Are you getting knowledge? Are you being empowered? Now, this blood, what are the importance of this blood? That enables evil to pass over. The first thing about this blood is it has life. Hallelujah. And 
you know the Bible says in Leviticus, I think it's Leviticus 12, 17 verse 11, it says the life of a thing is in the blood. So if the life of a thing is in the blood, the life of Jesus is in the blood. Come on, and if I drink the blood of Jesus, the life of Jesus is in? Oh, you are getting it. So when I have the soul life in me, and the Bible says when light comes into a place, what happens to darkness? Do you not think I have power to now speak to darkness with a bit of authority now? To say you have no place here. Because two days ago, maybe I did not drink the blood. But right now, the blood is inside of me. So it starts to battle anything that looks like deformity. And it starts to arrest everything that looks like mind unsettledness. So I speak to you. You spirit of tak 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 gas. Another thing about the blood that you should know is the blood is the only thing, and I'm going to say this categorically. The blood is the only thing that can get the devil's mouth shut. Yes, sir. The blood is the only thing. I can get his mouth shut. For so long, we've quoted that scripture, we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. The Bible did not say we overcame. It says we overcame him. There is a him. Mm, yes, sir. And it's that same him that God was talking about in Genesis when he was saying have dominion. He did not say have dominion over your fellow neighbor. Mm. So your pepper them gang is not scriptural. You are not supposed to be afflicting each other. We are supposed to be helping each other and complimenting each other. But the one that we should continually put on toes and continually afflict and defeat, the Bible said it, that my heel will perpetually be on his head. It's the devil. So the Bible says we overcame him. By what? It's the, only the blood of the lamb that can enable the devil to shut up. Only the blood of the lamb. When the blood starts to speak, Ha, ha, the devil cannot speak. That is why. The next thing that the blood does, it sets captives free and it gives them a stronghold over the enemy, against the enemy. Open Zechariah 9, verse 11. Okay. Zechariah 9, verse 11. Thank you, media team. It says, because of the covenant I made with you, sealed, by, sealed with blood, I will set your prisoners free. I will set your prisoners from death in a, wonderless, in a waterless dungeon. Look at that analogy. He's a prisoner. Then the dungeon is what? Waterless. Like everything is bad. God says, by covenant of blood, you will be set free. So I say to you, I don't care where you are in. I don't care. How deep the mess is. I say by reason of the blood of Jesus. You are coming out in Jesus name. Amen. Make that amen louder. Amen. Why is this important? Because there are things called generational causes guys. They are. They are real. They are real. I was listening to I think. Uh, uh, what's his name? Apostle Arome. And he was saying that there was a particular ailment that happened with his sister at 21. She went schizophrenic. His brother at 21. I think somebody in his family at 21. So he knew that the devil was going to come for him at 21. So he armed himself with the word of God. There are things like generational curses, guys. Yeah. It's, 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 it's real. But you see, the Bible says, be of good cheer. Yeah, hallelujah. That's, I, I, that's why I love it. Hallelujah. He says, in this life, there will be many problems. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. That world, I have overcome it. Yes, you, you get it, man. Farabale, I like that. So the blood is actually what enables you to farabale. It's not English, you. Ah, it's not. It's the blood. So now, when you shout the blood of Jesus, you know what the thing is breaking. You know how it's going into roots of hereditary problems and how it's shattering them. Oh, can I tell somebody, the blood can actually fix uh, 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 um, issues of health that are also hereditary. I know they have names, fibroid. Call their names so that we can defeat them. Oh, yeah? The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Keep on. Cancer, the blood of Jesus. Diabetes, the blood of Jesus. 
Sorry? Mental illness, the blood of Jesus. Can you see how we are doing it? When they stroke the blood of Jesus, hypertension, the blood of Jesus. The Bible says how Jesus has been given a name that is above every other name. And at the mention of the name, every knee must bow. Another thing the blood, the blood does is it purifies. And it's funny that something red can purify. <laughs> First John 1 verse 7. First John 1 verse 7. It says, but if you are, but if we are living in the light, as God is in light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, the Son, cleanses us from all sins. Now, I want to say to somebody, I don't know what it is that has become a recurring sin. This scripture says, and I'm a man of the word of God, that the blood of Jesus is some cleanses us from all sins. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. From all sins, guys. Plus the one that came as a result of you did not know where you were born. To the one that you, now you drag them. All sins can be purified Hallelujah. by the blood of Jesus. I'm excited. So the enemy cannot come. You see this <laughs> So the enemy cannot come and come and harass me. I don't know how many of you have seen as harassed. Ah, what you harass me? Yeah. Have you thought of the, you know when the first thing you say when you come into the presence of the Lord God is God, I'm sorry. Yeah. I am tired. My tired is tired of that kind of prayer. Ah, no, 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 no. I want to enter with Romans 8, for there's there for now. No more condemnation. Then I now raise my hands. I say, by flesh I am weak, but by your spirit. I am alive. And because of your spirit, I can raise my hands in worship. Because my righteousness is not my righteousness. In fact, what the Bible says my righteousness is, is a filthy rag. But if it's about the righteousness that enables me to raise my hands, it's the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So the enemy cannot bugger you. He ain't kiss Daniel. You can do that. Every time the enemy comes with a word of condemnation, I want you to tell him that you cannot condemn he who is washed clean. Hallelujah. It's not possible. Wow. You know, the Bible said that when they healed, when, when they prayed for blind Bartimaeus and he got his healing, it would only be madness for them to still see him two weeks after. I said, blind Bartimaeus, no, what is blind about him has gone. So the sin about me has gone. Call me by my real name. benefits of the blood one last thing the blood gives access to God you know <laughs> Hebrews 10 verse 19 it says so dear brothers and sisters we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood. I like that song in Yoba. I'm about to murder it, but you will help me. I trust you guys. Oh, choir people. And mercy. And Took our translate to English, don't worry. <laughs> I boldly enter God's throne. Not because I am the most righteous. And I think this will liberate somebody that you have struggled with your prayer life because you have fixated yourself with, let me just work on getting clean first, then I will pray. No. God is saying that the same way I told them to put the, the blood when they were in Egypt, it's the same way I need you to quote the blood immediately after you sin. Yes. Let my blood fight that sin. Let's see who, who pass who. There's something in man that always wants us to enter into self-righteousness. So the first thing we do when we sin is we try to beat ourselves enough to justify the punishment that we should receive. But guess what? If the real punishment comes, you cannot take it. Because the real wages of sin is what? Yeah. 
can you take it? So why are you beating yourself? He said, hey God, now death belongs to you, but then let me just beat, beat myself. It does him no good, it does you no good. You know the one that does him good? God, I'm sorry. I see that it is this movie, this nonsense movie that puts me in trouble. I'm not watching it again. In fact, I have told Kike, Toke, Ola, Keke, all the Kekes I know that all of you from now, if you see me go to cinema, seize my phone. I am working in two weeks purity and fasting. Check up on me. God, these things are done to help my flesh not get in the way. But above all, your mercy, your blood is speaking better things than the blood of Abel. That's how we do it. But you now move and you see that I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not ah. And God is like, Uma Sheo. And the devil is like, Meh. Don't get the devil to be able to say things to your God that you should not be saying. Let God look at my son and say, Ah, my son has recalibrated. I think someone needs to even hear that. You need to, rec- someone, oh, you need to recalibrate out of sin fast. You know, there's only some of you now take two weeks just to not solve one problem. <sighs> I'm not endorsing sin, you know. Yes. But I'm telling you that there is a life beyond waking up and falling into sin. You know one of the biggest beauty, the, one of the most amazing liberations that I've ever had? That my life is more than God checking the scorecard. Did you sin today? Did you not sin today? Did you sin today? No, 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 no. We are on a journey of life. We are doing great stuff. So when sin comes, it's but a snag. I'm like, God, I, I shouldn't have. Ah, I lied, Misha. Ah, and it was pressure. It was pressure. I was afraid. God, deal with fear, fear. Because if he deals with fear, I will not lie. And I move. So good. And I move. But you see, the enemy now say, oh, you lied. Does not make you see that it is fear that made you lie because you are not thinking. You are keeping morose. And God doesn't need that. Think and say, God, how did this happen? Even with the woman with the, um, the prostitute, God saw her. He says, you are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Feel this case. He did not say so. You know, prostitution is bad, right? Because shall know anyone they for the stone you die. He doesn't need all that. You know why? God delights in we advancing in work with him than for us staying nursing wounds that he has healed. He wants us advancing. You don't get that the journey is very far. And the speed that God uses to walk is the speed of light. And he delights in taking you along with him. So for every time that snake comes, he's like, okay, let's fix it. I have saved you. Don't do it again. I know I put my power inside of you. Rise up now. Let's go. But you now say, God, no, let's tabernacle here. But I also an instruction here. Only those that are circumcised in heart can enjoy the blood. You know, as theoretical and as interesting as this scripture is, oh, I'll just say the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. What makes it not just so easy is because only a circumcised, a circumcised heart can actually carry this mandate. And the Lord will show you something. Just let me just show you because my time is up. Um, Exodus 12 verse 43 because we are going to take the communion today <laughs> uh, and chains will be broken yeah. I don't even need your email to believe me I believe uh, see this it says then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron this instruction for the feast of what so you see what we are talking about right so there's no I'm not joining two unrelated scriptures no outsider is permitted to eat the Passover meal. No outsider. So, when I did a bit of research, I found out that when the children of Israel were actually passing over and they were leaving Egypt, not only Israel has left Egypt, there were some other tribes there. They called them, I think, the rabbles. They were also people that followed body join. Because suffering was known to everybody there. None of them collect. It was a case of if you were not an Egyptian, you would live a life less than what you know you, you dreamed of. And I, I'm saying it again, not because I don't want you to study abroad. Some of you that are waiting for January batch. <laughs> uh, don't worry. We, we, we send people up pretty much every week nowadays. And it's good, because some of them, and we believe that everyone is leaving this church, they are going for signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. But I beg of you, don't join bad work on the last time I saw bandwagon was during Okiafa. Do you remember what happened there? There was sound of war. 
people lost right thinking saw others go into a canal and they willingly followed you see there are some of you here the way i'm saying this thing you are having palpitation shouldn't that give you a reason to pause do you want me to say take it again and never set as i am saying it your heart is the beat is faster you want to go and use the toilet now you know you know it should give you a reason to check this thing that maybe i should sit with god and ask and for those that are saying when he said you should go ah you know what you know why i like scriptures when god told the israelites to go and babylon happened the ones that stayed in israel they suffered oh, oh did you know oh yes and i came up with this conclusion no land is green except where the lord is because the land they respond to him so when god chooses to be somewhere they will sing T.Y. Bello now. The land is green. is green. The, the elements respond to him. So when you go with him, that's what the Bible says, he leads me in the what? In, in what? In what? Did you just say pastures? He put it there. That we're about green here. Green pastures. So back to what I'm saying. The concept about the people of the world is that when they see a place that is looking good, everybody loses their sense of worship and they feel that everybody's victory is my victory. So if it's good for him, it's good for me. Not necessarily. So these guys also followed because it just seemed like as if, ah, Israelites are coming out from slavery. Let me just join them. But God said, I have no problem joining them. But if you must join them, you must do these things. So next verse. He says, but any slave who has been purchased may eat if he has been what? Now, as bloody and messy as circumcision is, in the new order, you know, Paul started to talk about circumcision of the what? Of the heart. And he started to talk about the fact that your heart must be appealing. You must be willing to serve God. Now, these guys, what the scripture was trying to tell them is, don't just use Israel as an escape route from Egypt. Love the God of Israel. Wow. And I feel like the reason why some of us are here is because Christianity is a cooler religion than Islam. And it's a better coping mechanism. That will not save you. You need to love the God of the testimonies you are hearing. Ah, did you hear? When you come to that church, somebody will just connect you. And you that you are waiting for international uh, scholarship, somebody will give you. Now there they happen, no. You won't get it. And you'll be frustrated. Ah, the girls of that church, they find you, and many of them, they never marry. They never marry. Make her just come out, just wear fine clothes, deceive one or two. You will fail. Because these ones are sound in the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, do not go for the superficial reasons. Your, your heart must be connected. So, look at another thing they said, 45. He says, I love this, it's very NLT. See what he said? Temporary residence. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know when I saw TR, I remember PR. Ayaya. It says temporary residence and higher servants may not eat it. You know, higher servants are people that are close to Christianity, but they are not really Christians. And I want to beg anybody that in any capacity, either you work in church, the church pays you, or you offer services for the church. Don't be this man who, that is a higher servant. He's just affiliated with... He's doing the work. He, 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 you will see him among the flock, but his heart is far from them. How you will know them is after the church, there are other things that carry their heart that is against God. So I want to beg of you, if you are here, today is your day of liberation, that after we do service, you still have the urge to do the things of the world. The Lord will make you from higher servant that does not love God to higher servant that loves God in the name of Jesus you know temporary residents are people that they are only there for a transit time there is something that they are coming for you understand just like the, sorry I'm using relocation again but maybe God wants to deal with something here you see can I tell you the honest truth if part of your relocation strategy is to bless the land that you are going in for you have a higher chance of success. If you are going there only to exploit the land, 
you most likely will fail. Because the government that is giving you a, put, giving you a chance is hoping that you better the economy. You can no longer be the one that will destroy it. Are you with me? Yes, sir. I, I, are you getting what I'm saying? Even God will not approve it. Because you are going to become a terror there. But how glorious and how joyful is it when we hear that a Nigerian goes somewhere and is making the place proud. That's the joy. So temporary residents are people that they don't really have an affinity for the country they are in. It's not the problems of, you know the way an, the ambassador of France or the ambassador of US is not really moved by your first scarcity. Hey. It's just like, eh, eh, ah. He calls the home office. Um, hi, my name is Tadadad of the United States. The, it's really bad over there. I think I will need more allowance. That's all he's concerned about. He is not going to pray for your nation. Woo! He is a temporal wow. resident. And God is saying that I don't want temporal residents. A temporal residence is a person that God tells you, wake up and pray for your neighbor. You're like, God, fix me first. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Next verse. Each Passover lamb must be eaten in one house. Do not carry out any of this meat outside and do not break any of his bones. Now when you see this, do not break the bones and you remember Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus' bones were not broken. So Jesus was, God was actually trying to show them how a temporary fix was yet to meet a permanent fix. Now, the people of this world in this time, they really tried their best to obey these laws. Now, 2022, Hope Center, you and I, having the blood of Jesus, do you not believe that your life is meant to count for more? Do you not believe that the enemy cannot afflict you anymore? So now that we know these things, when we take the communion, I want you to first have a conversation in your heart about every temporary residency plans that you are having with Jesus. And I want you to settle your residency now and say, God, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every every moment awake. Lord, have your way. You can serve the elements. I want you to sing it from your inside, Lord. Lord, I give you my love. I give you, give you my soul. I live for you alone. I live for you alone. Every breath, every breath that I take. Every moment awake, every moment I As you're also praying or saying that for another set of people, today is the day of your liberation. Anything that has stood as an Egypt in your life, we are about to take that blood that speaks better things. Everything that looks like a cycle of failure, of defeat, back to back. God is about to change it right now. Lord, have you me? I want us to rise up. right now to start to identify your Egypt. But before we do that, thank you, P.I. If in this message it has come to your understanding that you are a temporary resident, you look like us, but maybe you are not like us, and it's not fault of yours, maybe you struggled. Another thing that the Lord told me about the blood is the blood gives stability. <laughs> yes. You know, if you win, if you win a man's thoughts, you win him a man's actions. Anything that wins you in thought level will win you in action level. The things you choose really not to do that you still do 
If God changes your mindset and your thought pattern, you will not do those things. So stop fighting the actions now. Start to tell God, deal with my mind. Deal with my thought pattern. The reason why you never apply for jobs because you fear that they will not pick you is not because you are a failure. Your mind is conditioned. But if you talk to God to fix your mind, there is liberation. But you cannot enjoy this if you are not born again. So if you know you are here with all heads bowed, everybody still stand up with all heads bowed. You know that this that you are about to take is a needed thing because you know that you are not one with Christ. It will profit you not if you are just living in the emotions or you are not living repentant because of fear of what people will say. After they say, they cannot help you. After they say that, ah, oh, that guy is it. No, they cannot help you. So maybe you want to forget what the people are saying and tackle your issues and say, I am done. Today I want to escape. And the blood is available. But this thing in me has to go. So Lord, I give you my life. If you know you've not given your life to Christ before, or you know you need to rededicate your life, don't be shy. With all heads bowed and eyes closed, whoever you are, raise your hand. Don't be shy. There is no place for shyness here. God is fixated on dealing with issues. And if you are online, I want you to do the same thing. The blood, excuse me, the blood reaches anywhere. If you are online, you are close to your kitchen, get the communion element. I get it ready. But everyone that you know that God needs to make, you need to make things right with God. Your hand up is saying, God, I am ready. And for those people, I want you to say, Lord Jesus, today I give you my heart. I am tired of coming in and out of your love for me. Today I choose you. And I decree over my life that the world and its plans will not entice me anymore. I say to you, devil, get your hands off my life. My God has redeemed me by the blood of Jesus. I have been saved. I have been delivered. I have been set free. In the mighty name of Jesus we have prayed. I want to tell you, if you make those prayers, you are born again. I want to say to you, whatever has become a ceiling over your life has been lifted. Whatever has covered the blessings of God to land on you has been lifted. So now you can take this blood and body. Have we all taken the body? If you do not have it, just raise up your hand. Let me be sure that you don't have. If you do not have, raise up your hand. So everybody has it good. All right. Don't eat it yet. I just want to be sure that you have it. Yeah. Praise God. Can we open our Bible to the book of Exodus chapter 12? Keep Jesus. Exodus chapter 12 verse 11. Let's read it together. These are your instructions for eating this meal. Be fully dressed. Wear your sandals and carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat this meal with urgency for this is the Lord's Passover. Can we read it together again? One to go. Corinthians chapter 11, it talks about whenever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. In remembrance of what? That God is the one that breaks you through. God is the one that leads the Passover. You see, it's the Lord's Passover. You see, your testimony is actually God's victory. What you have experiencing is not, it's not actually, oh, it's my, it's not your job, it's God's job. It's my, my speak of marriage, it's God's marriage. Praise God. So we're going to do this with a sense, with praise, with an atmosphere of understanding. Somebody say, I'm passing over. You don't understand. They were not supposed to eat this and expect that they will remain in Egypt. Do you get that? They were supposed to eat this ready to enter their miracle. So when Bible says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me, meaning every time I eat the communion, I'm eating it urgently like I need to move. It's like my movement meal. It's like the meal I remind myself 
is is to condition your mind. Knowing Pastor was saying, um, your thought life, <laughs> we joke with it. And then immediately the Lord reminded me of, of Romans 12, renew your mind. Is you, God has given you the grace. You have to renew your mind with the word. And that's what we do with the communion. So who's ready to pass over? So you, well, you can't pass over absent-mindedly. What are you moving out of and moving into? It's time to say goodbye fear, hello hope. Come on. Goodbye fear, hello peace. So I want us to think about it. Again, if you read, let me use another translation. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to see what will message say about this. Here's how you're going to eat it. Be fully dressed and your sandals on and your stick in your hand. Eat in a hurry. It is the Lord's Passover. I think NLT is fine. Because this is saying, be fully dressed. Are you fully dressed? Yeah. You know your, what you dress with it now is the armor. It's not just walking stick. It's the armor. It's, do you have your shield of faith? Do you have, do you have your breastplate of righteousness? Are you ready? Is your mind kitted? Are you ready? I can't hear you. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you tired? Is your tired? Are you tired of being on the same thing? Are you tired of living life and hoping you have an understanding of your future? They knew they were going out. Don't eat this. I said nothing changed. In this kingdom, we don't feel to know something has happened. In this kingdom, we know and then we believe. We know. And that is what informs our action. In this kingdom, we are not waiting. If you don't finish eating it, I'm still here. Oh, nothing happened. Oh. A car did not just appear downstairs. You know? It's nobody just came to give me mysterious words. Somebody, no, you don't need to shake. It's a knowledge thing. It shift in your mind. So, Father Lord, we thank you for this that we're about to read. We see. Lord, we are fully dressed. We are ready because it's the Lord's Passover. It is your doing. It is what you, God, are doing. It is what you're doing in our lives. And Lord, we are partnering with you in the name of Jesus. I want you to play something rejoicing as we take this. As you take this immediately, begin to shout, begin to rejoice, begin to act out your Passover, act out your newness, act out your new season in the name of Jesus. Are you ready? So we can go ahead and take the bread. <laughs> 